Hello again and welcome to another video diary. Uh, it's day 16 of our Lexical Lab Summer School 2018 and today I, I was teaching um, the basic English course again which is this year um, three very very elementary possibly even starter level um, Sicilian teachers not teachers of English teachers of geography and PE um, all in their late 50s early 60s and it's been a really lovely course actually um, we've just started the second week and we've got to that stage where they're starting to feel confident enough to be themselves a little bit more in English and to bring their own senses of humour to the classroom in English for instance today um, at the end of the lesson one of the students tried to say um, with us you are very patient and I said well you know if you're a teacher you need to be patient at which point they all nodded and then I also said you know I also have two small children so if you have small children you need to be patient and Pucho one of the the guys in the class said yes but with children you count one two eight nine ten with us you count 76, 77, 78, 92, 93, which was a lovely little moment because, you know, he's basically telling a little joke about how we require more patience from you than most students and your children do. Um, obviously, I couldn't possibly comment on whether that's true or not, but it's lovely to see students starting to bring their lives into the classroom and their personalities into the classroom. I think one of the things that always strikes me when I go back and teach really low level classes such as this group who are you know right on the cusp of basically A0 to A1 really uh, is that a huge amount of what ends up happening in the class is to do with receptive abilities and being able to understand what you hear and process it without any real expectation on my part that you're then going to be able to produce it. Some of you may know this, this theory that Krashen tried to popularise about the silent period. And it's not exactly a silent period because they are quite a talkative kind of group, particularly in Italian in the classroom, but we do have moments of our talking in English as well. Um, what I think is interesting is that there is some, definitely some truth in the fact that students at low levels can take language in and absorb language without really being able to reproduce it in any kind of way. And I'll just give you one example. Yesterday we were looking at basic conversations, uh, sorry, this morning we were looking at basic conversations um, about shops and shopping. We were looking at things like who's next, how much would you like, how many would you like, anything else. Um, and, you know, they were kind of listening to shop conversations. We did some pronunciation on numbers of things like 13, 30, 40, 14. And we did a little kind of a dictation. They basically were given some sentences and they had to write down the numbers. I'll just play it so you can hear it. Track 35. One. That's 18 euros exactly. Two. That's seventy dollars and sixteen cents altogether. Three. Everything is reduced by fifteen per cent. Four. Those are thirteen ninety nine at the moment, reduced from seventeen. Five. It costs fourteen thousand pounds new. Six. Our apartment cost two hundred and forty thousand when we bought it. Now, what, <laughs> sorry, excuse me. Now, what's interesting about this particular exercise is um, we played it twice. Um, we did it once. They compared their ideas in pairs. I did it again and elicited the answers. They basically all got the answers right. They'd written down the correct numbers. Um, when I asked them to shout out the answers, what I got from them was the answers in Italian. OK, um, when I asked the weakest student in the group to come and write the answers up on the board while the others shouted out the answers, she could do that. So she'd obviously heard the English, got the English, got the, 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 the numbers written down, but wasn't able to reproduce that in English, only in Italian. And so we kind of had that negotiation where she'd write down 240,000 because the other students had said it. I'd say, yeah, it's 240,000. 
There were also lots of little issues within that kind of listening. The things like um, 17 euros, 17 euros, because uh, in Italian it's like eros, okay? And so they're not used to hearing it as euros. Um, and because the pronunciation is unfamiliar, even a very familiar word becomes sort of unhearable or inaudible to students as they're trying to process that particular piece of listening. So I think, you know, accepting receptive understanding and, and focusing on receptive understanding and not expecting any kind of, you know, production, really, um, let alone fully grammaticalized, accurate production, is really central to sort of um, understanding and working with students at this particular level. Right, I've prattled on far longer than usual, so um, I'll sign off for today and um, speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye.